Alright, I'm gonna push. You'll be fine, you'll be fine. <laughs> Remember the deep breaths. Remember the deep breaths. Just take deep breaths. Oh, take deep deep. breaths. No, 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 madam. Just just take deep breaths. Take deep breaths. You can do it. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Alright, now let's do this one last time. I can see I can see the baby's head already. Alright, you do this. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations, brother. My name is Patience Ozoko. My fans call me Mama G, and I say G for general. I'm an actor, and uh, I've been acting all my life. <laughs> I have four biological kids, three boys and one girl. My name is Mansura Isa. I'm a mother of four kids, and I'm happily married. <laughs> My name is Yabo Ojo. I'm an actress, a movie producer, a businesswoman, and most importantly, I am a mother, a mother of two kids. My name is Iene Brendan. I'm a mom of two boys. I'm an interior designer as well. My name is Oluwato Biloba Famuiwa. I am a baker and I'm also a milliner. Married and I have two sons. My name is Chinyere. A bank. I am a YouTuber and a content creator. I'm a mom of three beautiful girls. Hi, my name is Tito Idakola. I am a mom of three. I am an advocate for positive maternal mental health. I am also a counselor and a writer. I started having children actually quite young. And now if you see me with my children, you think they are my brothers and sisters. That's one advantage of starting early to have children. Not too early though because I was old enough to really have children. I never, I swear I never planned motherhood. <laughs> so for you, if you planned your motherhood well, you're very lucky. I never had that opportunity to plan anything. Nothing prepares you for what your experience will be. I went to the hospital, I was sick. I didn't even know t that I'm pregnant. And when I reached the, uh, the hospital, the doctor now told me that I'm pregnant. I was so happy that I had to call him because he was not around, he traveled. And I told him that the doctor told me that I should be eating a lot of eggs, a lot of fish, a lot of um, protein and so on to have a healthy baby. And when he came back that night, because you know that I love fish, like I really love fish. And he went to there's this Cubana place in Abuja. So he went then and bought me a roasted chicken uh, fish, big, big ones, like three. He bought 10 cartons of egg and, and a lot of milk. He bought a lot of things and he was like, since they told you you should eat fish, you should eat a lot of eggs. So I bought a lot of things for you to eat. And I was like, look at you. <laughs> Do you think that I'm, I'm going to finish all these things in one day? I can't finish them. And that's how the journey started. And Alhamdulillah. The one thing my mother told me said, when you are in labor, don't cry. Because if you cry the first time, it means that in every pregnancy, you will keep crying. Labor was terrible, always been terrible. Um, I mean, I, I heard people have easy pregnancies and like easy labors where um, baby just like pops out in a few minutes, but I've always had at least over 12 hour labors before, um, or 12 hours of intense labor before I give birth. It's been like that for like all my babies. So labor has always been very intense. I, on the average, it was quite good. My first child was normal delivery, second and third. But my last child was cesarean session. And the reason was that the doctor said it was unstable lie. And uh, my baby was kind of changing position in every 10 minutes. So they were not ready. I didn't have any problem. They were not ready to take the risk of letting me go into, uh, into proper labor. So my first, I had a baby and at 42 weeks she passed away. I think I brought forth the baby way before time. Like the doctor was telling me, no, it's not time for you to push, but I couldn't just, you know, bear. So I pushed the baby out and unfortunately my womb got torn. So I had internal bleeding and I passed out. Uh, I, was, I was gone for, I think, eight hours. My husband said, um, the doctor was already like, Mr. Fam, you are, I think we are losing your wife. So if you can pray, start praying. If you have, 
a pastor, start calling the pastor. I was in labor for about 12 hours or so, and then um, she was born, and then she passed away a day after she was born. So that was kind of the beginning of my journey to motherhood. But I still believe that even though she's not here, she is my daughter. Um, so that was the beginning. I sat down on the bed, put down my first leg. Before I could take up the second leg, the baby just like shot out from my uterus and it was out. And they have to catch the baby. With my first baby, after three, after four months, I couldn't use my knees. I got married um, with a size 40. Yeah, it's like 40 feet and I found out that with every pregnancy I have a bigger fit like so from 40 my first baby I became a 41 and with my second baby a 42. My feet size have increased I think my voice has become deeper. I stopped breastfeeding my son and then I got pregnant because when I'm breastfeeding I don't see my period so I didn't know I was pregnant until I stopped breastfeeding I'm like oh, I'm supposed to start seeing this monthly thing I'm not seeing it then I found out I was pregnant. Uh, so my boobs were still okay. But after Priscilla, everything just went like this. <laughs> uh, my people kept telling me that you are getting darker. But when I had my, my daughter, oh, I, my color didn't change. I was looking very beautiful. And then the, another thing that was very annoying was I was always forgetting things, had memory loss a lot of times. I was always forgetful, I was highly irritable, and I ate a lot. Mm. I ate a lot. Um, I would say I was borderline depressed in the beginning part of the, that pregnancy. Postpartum was depressive, as in I, I almost fell into depression. I was always crying. I was always down, you know, and then, Later, I started getting better. Confusion being the key word, a lot of tears. There is one thing I never, I never heard about it. I didn't know what it was until I experienced it, what they call after pain. I was in serious pains from not being able to lactate and then you are asked to put the baby to breast and the baby keeps latching on the breasts. No breast milk, I'm bruised. I was bruised on my nipple, bleeding, and it wasn't just coming out. So every time I looked at the baby, I was kind of upset. Somehow it just felt like that baby wanted to just punish me. When I had my first child, Joshua, I had not fully healed from the loss. So when you're pregnant and you're dealing with a lot of fear, um, that's one angle. But when the baby comes, the other fear is, is this baby going to survive? And I think that fear controlled me for a long time you know I won't sleep because I'm always checking is he awake is he alive lest this baby dies <laughs> like the other ones so it was a very difficult time um I, I lost myself a lot I didn't know who I was I had no confidence I felt very insecure I never wanted to leave my house and then with that came shame because after everything you've been through, you finally have a healthy baby. How can you say you're even depressed? And so it was a very difficult time. And um, so there was a lot of healing that had to take place. And I think that's even when I wrote my book, because I, I, there was a lot that I knew I needed to release. And so the more I spoke, the more I got help, the, the freer I became. Motherhood had a good effect on me because I now saw myself as a mother to every other child that I see. Um, I've grown since becoming a mother and knowing that I have people that are completely dependent on me is just a different level of adulting. Um, I think for me it's birthed a lot of things. I think I've found a lot of myself in motherhood. Um, Having my own children, my own babies change the way I think and it's made me to become more matured and I, if whenever I want to do something, the first thing I think about is my children. Will this thing affect my children? As a celebrity, you know, there are some things that we can we can do, not because uh, we we won't be able to do it, but because it's going to affect us, affect our family and everybody around us. So whenever I want to do something or I want to make decision, my children comes first. 
yes, I couldn't go to school as much as I wanted to. So in that part, yes. But with my acting career, no. Because my kids came, I took them along. Everywhere I went to, with, when they went with me. It was easy for me. But education-wise, yeah, yeah, for that, yes. Motherhood affected my career positively. So no matter the role you give me to play today, <laughs> I still play <laughs> as a mother, whether a wicked one or a good one. Because I, I already know what it means to be a bad mother. A super powerful mother. I don't think mothers should die. <laughs> Being a mom already is a superpower. <laughs> so what would it be? Hmm. The babies don't have to wake up at night to feed. Um, to be with them 24 hours in a day. <laughs> but it's not possible. They will go to school. After school, they must come back to me. I would have said maybe be, have like a, be a guardian angel so I'm like following my child around. But I still think it would be weird because I don't always want to be there with them. Anyway, follow them around without them knowing it. Let's, let's just put it that way. I wish mothers will never die because they go through so much and they do so much. And um, uh, like for me, I, in my young age, I, I didn't know my mom until I was eight. So when I knew her, I didn't understand her. You know, um, and um, when I became a teenager, I started getting a little bit close to my mom because then I started really needing her. And when I got married and when I had my baby, she was totally there, you know, and that brought us closer. Then I appreciated her more. Like, oh, this is all you had to go through. I just love her because she was my best friend. She was the only one who would, she would come up every day, every day to tell me, I love you. I would like to advise mothers today that things have really changed from my own time to this time. Uh, the things that uh, we did then may not uh, take place today. But all I'm saying is, find out what is best for your family. To all the moms, um, you're doing amazing. I know you sometimes question yourself, you wonder if you're doing enough, but you're doing a great job. The fact that you're just, you just want the best for your kids is enough. And I just think you should love yourself and then you can love your kids and you can even do the best possible work as a result. It's actually worth it. It's actually an amazing journey. And I always, always wish that every woman gets to experience it. Mothers, you're doing amazing. You are doing amazing. Some days it feels like your best is not good enough. But you need to give yourself, you need to be easy on yourself, go easy on yourself and allow yourself to ease into it. You're doing an amazing job. The fact that you show up every day and you've not run away from the baby, you've not run away from the home, you're already doing excellent. I'll just say that you're doing good. Um, don't beat yourself up about some things. You can't do everything. Um, and I know that the society has placed us in a place where sometimes we feel like we're not doing enough or this mother is doing better. But I just want you to know that there's no one way to raise a child. Um, we all have different methods and whatever method works for you and is good for your child, it's not detrimental to their um, growth or their development, then you're doing good. Yes, our mothers, sometimes kids can be really... <laughs> ah, they can really take so much, you know, so much from you, especially um, when you have those kids early and um, you have to deal with all the taking care of the kids, waking up in the night. It can be very frustrating, but trust me, at the end of the day, when they start growing up, you begin to enjoy it and you begin to see that all your efforts was never in vain.